Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Yo Dusta Jantara Suttan Sahit Rajam Hidis Pisha Chaha Yavaiva Malavat Uttama Shloka Lalasa Chant Yo Dusta Jantara Suttan Sri Rajan it is Bisha Jai Vaiva Malava Uttama Sakalala Saha Ladies Yai Jajan Darasatan Sri Rajam Hiris Pisha Chaya Veva Malavad Sokalasa Yaha The same Jada Bharat who is formerly Maharaj Bharat the son of Maharaj Vishabdev Dustajan, very difficult to give up. Darasutan, the wife and children, or the most opulent family life. Surit, friends and well wishers. Rajam, a kingdom that extended all over the world. It is Bisha, that which is situated within the core of one's heart. Jahal, he gave up. Yuva, Eva, even as a young man. Malavat, like stool. Uttamashlokalalasa, who is so fond of serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead known as Uttama Shloka. Translation. Well, in the prime of life, the great Maharaj Bharat gave up everything because he was fond of serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Uttama Shloka. He gave up his beautiful wife, nice children, great friends, and an enormous empire. Although these things were very difficult to give up, Maharaj Bharat was so exalted that he gave them up just as one gives up stool after evacuating. Such was the greatness of His Majesty. Purport. The name of God is Krishna because he is so attractive that the pure devotee can give up everything within this material world on his behalf. Maharaj Bharat was an ideal king, instructor, and emperor of the world. He possessed all the opulences of the material world, but Krishna is so attractive that he attracted Maharaj Bharat from all his material possessions. Yet, somehow or other, the king became affectionate to a little deer and, falling from his position, had to accept the body of a deer in his next life. Due to Krishna's great mercy upon him, he could not forget his position and he could understand how he had fallen. Therefore, in the next life as Jada Bharat, Maharaj Bharat was careful not to spoil the next life, his en not to spoil his energy, and therefore he presented himself as a deaf and dumb person. In this way, he could concentrate on his devotional service. We have to learn from the great King Bharat, how to become cautious 
and cultivating Krishna consciousness. A little inattention will retard our devotional service for the time being. Yet, any service rendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead is never lost. A little devotional service rendered sincerely is a permanent asset, stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5.17. Chakta satarmam charanam bhujam hare Pajanna pakavo tapate tato yadi Atavava batra mabut amushkim Kovartapto pajatam satarmata Somehow or other, if one is attracted to Krishna, whatever he does in devotional service is a permanent asset. Even if one falls down due to immaturity or bad association, his devotional assets are never lost. There are many examples of this, Ajamila, Mahajbharat, and many others. The Krishna Consciousness Movement is giving everyone a chance to engage in devotional service for at least some time. A little service will give one an impetus to advance and thus make one's life successful. In this verse, the Lord is described as Uttama Shloka. Uttama means the best, and Shloka means reputation. Lord Krishna is full in six opulences, one of which is reputation. Lord Krishna, Aishwaryasya, Samagrasa, Viryasya, Yashasa, Shriya. Krishna's reputation is still expanding. We are spreading the glories of Krishna by pushing forward this Krishna consciousness movement. Krishna's reputation 5,000 years after the battle of Kurukshetra is still expanding throughout the world. Every important individual within this world must have heard of Krishna, especially at the present moment, due to the Krishna consciousness movement. Even people who do not like us and want to suppress the movement are also somehow or other chanting Hare Krishna. They say the Hare Krishna people should be chastised. Such foolish people do not realize the true value of this movement. But the mere fact that they want to criticize it gives them a chance to ch chant Hare Krishna. And this is success. Jai Shri Prabhupada. Mukam karati vachalam bhangam lang hai te gadim yaki pam tam ham vande shi gurum dilatavinam. O magyana timirana siya gananjara shakaya chakshuritam yena tasamai shi gurave namaha. Shimad Bhagavatam is Amala Puranam. It's the pure, pure scripture. If we hear Srimad Bhagavatam, it destroys all inauspicious things in the heart. Srinvatama Sakata Krishna Punya Shavana Kirtanam. Nashta Prayesha Bhadeshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. So I will discuss in this class today three points. The first point is what is so attractive about Krishna? that we can give up everything to serve him. Second point, how Maharaj Bharat, he got attracted, but how could he leave? How could he fall down from his, how could he leave Krishna and forget him? And the third point, how a great opportunity we all have because we've come to Krishna and how we should share it with others. So the first point, Srila Prabhupada says in the purport, about Krishna. The name of God is Krishna because he is so attractive that the pure devotee can give up everything within this material world on his behalf. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th canto, 14th chapter, verse 7, there is a very nice prayer spoken by Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma says that one day the scientist may be able to count all the atoms in the universe, or even, maybe even in this world. Or one day, they may be able to count all the molecules of sunshine. Or one day, they may be able to count all the snowflakes. We don't see it here, but if you go west, if you go north, I guess, in the Himalayas. So, a very beautiful purport by Sanatana Goswami he says, of course, I, for, I forgot to give you the punchline. Uh, the punchline is that okay, they one day may be able to count all these things, but they'll never be able to count the qualities of Krishna. Krishna has so many qualities. And Sanatana Goswami says, he has a quality 
for each and every one of us, each and every living entity that will specially attract us to Him. So each one of us will be attracted to Krishna and He's giving a special quality to attract us. So we were all, all of us, we left something and we came to Krishna consciousness. How are we attracted to Krishna? Of course, the first thing is the holy name. The holy name is so wonderful that uh, if you just hear the holy name, you, you, you can't think of anything else. So in the early days with Srila Prabhupada, we were chanting 12-hour kirtan every day on the streets. And it was so amazing that we forgot our material bodies completely. We were so happy. We would come home for prasad and, and we wouldn't just wait, you know, we would dance and sing waiting for prasad to be served. We, we were always chanting and dancing the whole day and night, practically. I know one time somebody asked me, um, you look a little sick, uh, are you feeling well? And I said, well, uh, either um, maybe I have fever or maybe it's just ecstatic symptoms, I don't know. <laughs> so that's how we were in old days. We couldn't tell, we, we kind of lost touch with our material bodies. So that's what happens if you chant Hare Krishna 12 hours a day for years, few years. Um, it works. And some of us are attracted by Prabhupada's books also. Uh, because, uh, so Krishna is coming in the form of his holy name, in the form of his books. Amazing books. Bhagavad, we only had a few. We just had first canto of Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, but it was enough. Nectar of Devotion and Krishna book. Those four books we had. Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Isha Upanishad. Those are the books and it was enough. Uh, just a few lines or a few chapters and, and you're convinced. And then the pictures, the pictures that we see, these beautiful pictures, they're windows to the spiritual world. We see Krishna's pastimes, how he's playing with his devotees. And the deities, uh, we'll see them soon. You see the devotees in front of the deities. And they, they're looking at the deities with eyes of love. Premanjana charita bhakti vilochanena. You see the deities, you can pray, you can communicate. Krishna is here. And also we were attracted by Srila Prabhupada, by his example, by his words, by his love, by his glance. There was one <coughs> devotee, <coughs> well, before he was a devotee, he was a boxer, a fighter, fighter. And he was coming to the temple and the devotee said, well, why don't you just stay with us and join, become devotee? He said, well, you know, um, I just can't give up my boxing. I can't give up my fighting. I'm too attached. So then Prabhupada came to the temple and, uh, and when, uh, when Prabhupada was leaving, there was a huge crowd of devotees. He, Prabhupada was in, got inside his car and this boxer was pushed against the car. His w face was pressed against the window of the car. So Prabhupada was staring at him for a minute or two and that was it. And then after that he said, okay, I'm joining. I'm joining the temple. They said, well, what about your boxing? He said, after a glance like that from Srila Prabhupada, how can I go back to my boxing? So the glance of the pure devotee is so powerful, so powerful. Because of this, Maharaj Bharat left everything. And uh, he had everything. He had, the whole, he had the whole universe, practically. He had the whole world. Uh, people think you renounce when you have nothing. But he actually had everything. I mean, a lot of us, we had nothing to renounce much. And that's why we came. We had no money. We were hippies. Uh, but uh, Maharaj Bharat had everything. He had the whole world to renounce. So normally it's difficult for somebody who has everything, who's qualified, to give up everything. Just like Queen Quinty says, Janmai Shraya Shuti Shibire Tamana Madapuman. Naivarhat Abhiratum Vai Tam Akinshinagucharam. You belong to those people who have nothing. It's very difficult for someone who has janma, who has a high birth, who has aishwarya, who has opulence, who has shuti, who has learning, and who has beauty. It's very difficult for them to chant Hare Krishna with feeling. But the devotees, they can do this. Just like a child, if a child has some toys when he's small, he plays with his toys, he thinks, wow, these are the best. But when he grows up, you know, he gets the real thing. He may have a, a toy car, but when he grows up, he gets a real car, and that's much more fun to play with than a, than a toy car. So, he, the devotee. There's so many things in this world that 
we can enjoy, but when you get Krishna, then you forget all those things. It doesn't mean anything to you anymore. Nothing at all. Just like uh, in book distribution, there was one man in Ireland who, who told the devotee, you know, the happiest day of my life was when I got my boat. Because in Ireland, there's many rivers and lakes, and they like to go on their boats every and show off. So, and then he said to the devotee, but actually, that was not the happiest day. The happiest day of my life was when I sold my boat because it gave me so much trouble to maintain. So that is happiness in this material world, very difficult to maintain. You have to work very hard to maintain your happiness here. And uh, one devotee was just telling me that uh, she's going to Hawaii. You know, Hawaii is like heavenly planet. Prabhupada said, you know, if there's any enjoyment there's in this world, it's in Hawaii. But now, you know, beautiful ocean, island, many islands, but now you can't swim in the ocean because of the radiation from Japan coming there. So the enjoyment is starting to actually be finished. So the thing is, we have come to Krishna, why do we leave? Prabhupada in the purport, he gives us a warning here. Um, so we have to learn from the great King Bharat how to become cautious and cultivating Krishna consciousness. A little inattention will retard our devotional service for the time being. Retard means it will stop it, it will slow it down quite a bit. Inattention. So, how to be cautious. In the, in the purport, in the prayers of Shukadeva Goswami, Sri Prabhupada talks about this. He said, the pure devotee thinks himself fallen into the ocean of birth and death and incessantly, means constantly, prays to the Lord to lift him up. So this should be our mentality. We can fall at any moment, even if not physically, mentally. He only aspires to become a speck of transcendental dust at the lotus feet of the Lord. So that's Shikshastika 5. And then he loses all his attraction for material enjoyment. So inattention, we hear about one of the offenses to the holy name is inattention. I'm not going to talk about it a lot, but just briefly, distraction, laziness, indifference. We get distracted while we're chanting. Sometimes we fall asleep, we're lazy. And even if we're not sleepy and we're not distracted, we're indifferent. Oh, I don't feel like it. I don't want to chant now. I, let me do something else. Inattention. So Baj Bharat, he was inattentive in his devotional service. He, he was inattentive, he became inattentive in his spiritual practice because why? He was attentive to the deer. His attention was elsewhere. So he lost it in his spiritual life. So if our attention goes elsewhere, now we have so many things, our attention, our cell phones, our computers, our internet, our attention can go there. So we have to be very cautious, we have to be very careful to be attentive in our chanting, in our devotional service. His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami, just before he left this world, he gave a class. And he gave a class on fall down and he said, why do devotees fall down? And he was saying from high places, but this applies to all of us, four reasons. Four reasons why devotees fall down. First reason, offenses to other devotees. So for that we have to be very, very careful. Even if somebody is a new devotee, we should be careful. Pride that we think, okay, I'm the best devotee and I know everything. We can fall down, so um, aparad, pride, lack of association. So here was Maharaj Bharat's, one of his problems was he had a bad association with the deer and no, no good association with devotees, so that was his problem. And then lack of knowledge, that can also cause us to fall down because we have to know somewhere along the path we're going to get challenged. We're going to have doubts. These are going to come up. These are to come. They will come, and we will have to be able to stick through it, even through this difficult time. So, this offense to devotees. This is the most very serious one. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He went to the house of a drunkard, and he blessed the drunkard, but he did not care for the offenders to the devotees. He chastised them. He avoided them. He wouldn't even speak to them. He wouldn't speak to the Mayavadis for a long, long time. 
Jagaya Madhai, they were drunkards, but they got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya because they did not offend the devotees. So then when Lord Chaitanya took the sins of Jagaya Madhai, he turned black. And then he said, whoever offends the devotees, they will get the sins of Jagaya Madhai. So don't do it. Uh, otherwise, you're in trouble. So it, there's a beautiful verse quoted here by Srila Prabhupada in the purport. It says that, we may give up all our duties in this world and take shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. But we may not be pakka. Our bhajan may be apakva. Apakva means not complete, uh, not ripe. The fruit of love, the fruit of our bhajan is not ripe. We're, we're kacha. We're not pakka. We're not pakka devotees. Most of us are kacha devotees. So, um, so it's not surprising we may fall down if we're kacha devotees. At least I'm speaking for myself. Um, so what to do? It says, don't worry. There is no loss. Again, you will come back to Krishna. So Prabhupada said sometimes sentimentally people join this movement, but he'll get the best benefit, greatest benefit. Everyone's, some, some people are doctors, lawyers, students. But Narada says, give up everything. Krishna also says, Sarvadharma Puritaja, Maame Kam Sharanam Raja, you give up all your nonsense, Dharma, and surrender to me. So if these people give up everything and surrender to Krishna, what's going to happen to them? Like, you know, when you're 50 years old, 60 years old, who's going to take care of you? No social security, we don't have social security, we don't have any security, only Krishna security. That's what we have. So, in a lecture in New Vrindavan, Shri Prabhupada was saying, he was speaking in America, New Vrindavan. Now in this country, the boys and girls who are taking to Krishna consciousness, previous to this, there were meat eaters. There were so many things, meat eaters, maybe drug takers, so many. According to Brahminical religion, abominable condition. But just see, even they were so fallen in this abominable condition that uh, immediately they're taking up this movement. So those who are joining this movement, Prabhupada said, in this country, that was America, they're supposed to be previously Krishna conscious. Somehow or other, Jai Konitai, Jai Krishna Balaram, Jai Radha Somehow or other, they couldn't finish in their last life. So although they're born in a country, there's no trace of Krishna consciousness, there's no purity, still they're taking it up. They're taking it up. Where is the loss? No loss. So Narada Muni, he wants to point out that also Bhagavad Gita, once you've taken, you will not fall down to the lowest place. Uh, so this is natural. There's an example Prabhupada gave. He was talking in London to one devotee named Bajahari, my godbrother. So Bajahari, he was working in a factory, steel factory, very heavy. There's all this molten, melted steel coming in huge, huge pots. And you have to be there and, and it's burning. It's, it's actually hell. Uh, fa Prabhupada said factory is another name for hell. So if you've ever worked in a factory, I know my son worked in a factory, I won't discuss it here because maybe he's listening and he won't like that. But um, so anyway, factory is hell. Now he's, now he's okay. But uh, he said to Prabhupada, you know, I almost had a nervous breakdown from the strain. Prabhupada said, actually, because in your last life, you were all Brahmanas. Imagine that. Otherwise, how could you come to the platform of Krishna consciousness so quickly? Actually, my Guru Maharaj has ordered all of you to take birth to help me spread this mission. Now we are all together again. So many of you also, who knows, you could have been Brahmanas in your past life and that's why you're coming at such a young age, joining at a very young age. You're coming here, you're listening. So Prabhupada, then he says, anyone who has associated, anyone who has come to Krishna consciousness, he cannot forget. There's another verse um, that comes after this verse 17, verse 19, that Smaran Mukundyangri Upaguhanam Punarvihatomichena Rasagraho Chanaha. And that means that 
you cannot forget Krishna, vihatum. You, even you may give up, you may fall down, you may go away, but you cannot give it up. And Prabhupada gives the example of hot sugar cane juice. That's hot, you're feeling uncomfortable to take it, but because it's sweet, you can't give it up. And so Krishna consciousness is very intense, sometimes uh, uh, very diff makes you uncomfortable. You have to go beyond your comfort zone, especially maybe this month in, in the marathon. And so, but still you can't give it up. You have to come back to Krishna once you've tasted this. So, can I give it up? Just like uh, how Indra Prabhu came to Krishna consciousness. Uh, there was the Harinam party in Washington, D.C. And he, as soon as he heard the Harinam, he just started following it. And he was running so fast to catch up that he lost one of his shoes. And the devotee said, why don't you go back and get your shoe? He said, no, 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 I'm not going back. And he never went back. <laughs> he was with the Harinam the rest of his life. So this is obvious, you know, that uh, he, Krishna doesn't allow us to forget. There was one devotee in Ireland again, and he, uh, he was finding it very uncomfortable in Krishna consciousness. Getting up early for Mangalarti, this is so difficult. And, 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 and the worst thing was, there's no toilet paper in the bathrooms. So he left Krishna consciousness, and he got a job in a factory. And you know, it was a, a, some kind of paper factory. He didn't know what kind of paper. And he was working at night, 2.30 in the morning, 3 o'clock, 3.30. And he was working very hard, moving these huge, big tons of paper. So one, and he was thinking, oh wow, you know, I, before I was getting up the same time, I'm getting up the same time now. Uh, 3.30 in the morning, I'm working so hard, and that Mangalarti wasn't so hard work, you know, it wasn't that bad as, as this. So, so then he punctured one of the boxes, and out came rolls of toilet paper on top of him. So Krishna gave him his desire. He wanted toilet paper, and he got it on top of him, tons. Then he realized, oh, it's not so good after all, better I go back to the temple. <laughs> Krishna, Krishna, in a funny way, he brings us back sometimes when we go away. So that was a really good example of how Krishna brings you back. And um, so Narada Muni is stressing the point that there, there is no loss uh, here. Yatra kavabhadram abhuda mushikam. You may give up everything. You may not do your duties properly. You may not do your varnasham properly. But there is no loss. What is the use if you do your varasham without Krishna consciousness? It's no use. So there is no loss because why? The seed of bhakti has been planted in our heart. Lord Chaitanya says that he has given us the bhakti lata beach and we just have to water it and it will grow. So not only is there a seed in our heart, there is a whole tree of bhakti that, which is planted in this universe by Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya is the main trunk and Nityananda and Adoita are the two big trunks that come out. So Lord Chaitanya, he planted the tree and the fruits have grown, the fruits of love of God and he's taking, he's eating and he's distributing. And how is Lord Chaitanya distributing? He doesn't consider who is asking for it, who is not, nobody's asking for it. We have to go and give them. He's, and that's like Lord Chaitanya, you just go and give them the fruits. And they're not, nobody's asking, oh, give me a Bhagavad Gita. Maybe few people now because our movement has spread. But in the beginning, nobody was asking. And no, who is fit, who is unfit, he's not asking. He just gave an order. He gave an order to this, to everyone. We are all branches. This gun is a branch of this tree. So Lord Chaitanya said, I am the only gardener. This is in uh, Adi Lila, chapter 9. How many places can I go? How many fruits can I pick and distribute? Therefore, I order every man within this universe to accept this Krishna conscious movement and distribute it everywhere. So that's his order. His order to us is to distribute it. In the verse, it says, Dustajan, very difficult to, to give up. He gave up material enjoyment. Lord Chaitanya also did that. He, there is a verse in 11th canto, 5th chapter. It says, uh, 
my army gum, Dieta apes to un for David, one day Maha Purushate, Charanar Vindam. The Lord Chaitanya, he gave up beautiful wife, mother, and beautiful, Raja Lakshmi. He gave up Lakshmi Devi, who everyone, the demigods, are desiring. Taramishta Aryavachasa, because of the words of a Brahmin, he went to the forest, he took sannyas. And what did he do after taking sannyas? Mayamrigam daita epsta anvatavad. He chased after the conditioned souls. Who, and, and why does he have to run? Because the conditioned souls are running after mayamrigam. They're running after the enjoyment of this world. So Lord Chaitanya has to chase them and we also have to chase them. Uh, somebody chased us and now we have to chase somebody and bring them to Krishna consciousness. So this is Lord Chaitanya's mercy. And he gave another order in, in Adi 939, distribute this Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. Let people eat these fruits and ultimately become free from old age and death. In the purport, Prabhupada says, this Krishna conscious movement introduced by Lord Chaitanya is extremely important because one who takes to it becomes eternal, free from birth, death, and old age. Yes, it's a fact. How many people my age are in the old age homes? And I'm traveling and teaching Krishna consciousness. It's a much better way to spend your old age, I must say. After 44 years of, of uh, practicing Krishna consciousness, this is a wonderful way to spend your old age. You should all do it. Um, so, we have to give the people the chance to become free from their suffering. We have to share the mercy. Now we have this... Uh, um, book distribution. So this is going on. This is one way to share the mercy. There are so many ways. Again, I'll tell you one last story about somebody who got a book of Srila Prabhupada and how it changed his life. There was a drunkard, again, in the Western countries. And uh, he was very, very low. And, but one time his brother got a Bhagavad Gita. So the drunkard, he was staying with his brother, he went home, he picked it up, and he, he was very drunk. He read one line from the Bhagavad Gita and ah, threw it. Terrible, horrible. But then one day came, this drunkard went unconscious, and he went to Yamaraj. And Yamaraj said, so, you have been very, very sinful in your life. What are you going to do now? And just at that moment, he remembered the line from Bhagavad Gita. And he, he got consciousness again with near-death experience. He said, oh, oh, I was saved. Then he took the Bhagavad Gita. He said, I'm going to read this book. He read the whole Bhagavad Gita. He saw the address. He went to the temple and he joined, became a devotee. But after six months' time, it was becoming a little bit austere in the Brahmachari Ashram. And he was thinking, I really need a drink. I really, I, phew, this is too much. He went to the bar. Whole day he was drinking. Nighttime came. And the bartender said to him, So, what are you going to do now? <laughs> he ran back to the temple. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we have, to, we have to be cautious. Uh, but the fact is that these books are very powerful. Everything, just seeing the deities, seeing the devotees, it's very, very powerful. Uh, so we have to be introspective ourselves and, and ask the question, what are we going to do now? Are we going to be Krishna conscious? Are we going to forget Krishna? Don't forget Krishna. Always remember him somehow or other and try to take the mercy and give it to others. So, Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Anybody have any questions? We have some time. Yes? I don't hear very well in this. So we have to remember during our life, we get next morning on the Pardon me? It is called like whatever we remember. At time of death. death. Right. We get next morning. Yes. So the next verse is Bharat Maharaj is a dear proper prayer to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. But still, why he gets next morning? Okay. So as